GOP members of Congress like Paul Gosar and Marjorie Taylor Greene are facing growing scrutiny over their roles in the attempt to overthrow our democracy on January 6th after a bombshell report linked them to the organizers of the day's events. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. The stakes of Joe Biden's presidency and the Democrats' agenda could not be higher. If Democrats don't deliver on their promises and fail to give voters a reason to keep electing Democrats, then the Republicans waiting in the wings to take power are people like this. Rudy Giuliani used a filter to make himself look like Abraham Lincoln in an out of tech on Virginia governor, gubernatorial candidate Terry McAuliffe. Virginia, vote against the man who dishonored our past by selling my bedroom hundreds and hundreds of times to scoundrels in a pay-for-play scheme. In my time, we had a name for men who sold bedrooms for one night. In your time, the name is Terry McAuliffe and the Clinton fleas once and for all. Wow. Disney's haunted mansion really went all out this year. <laughs> You know, you know you're a real scumbag when you can make Abraham Lincoln seem dishonest. <laughs> That's Rudy Giuliani, former mayor of America's largest city and former personal attorney to the president of the United States, although he looks more like a character who got caught from Oregon Trail because <laughs> he gave the kids nightmares. Whenever you encountered him, a message would pop up that says, you have died of embarrassment. <laughs> looks like the guy you get your mission from in Grand Theft Auto Civil War. <laughs> Your next mission is to whack Robert E. Lee. <laughs> then go see Vito down at the docks and tell him it's done. Also, what accent is he doing? Is that supposed to be 19th century American or coma patient learning how to talk again? <laughs> That's what Abe Lincoln had actually sounded like the North would have given up and lost the Civil War. Four score and seven years ago, somebody rented out my bedroom. This guy sucks. <laughs> That's the modern GOP. Sorry, that's the current GOP. I tried to overthrow an election based on bad conspiracy theories from bamboo fibers on ballots to Italian satellites hacking voting machines to election software designed by Hugo Chavez and the CIA to spread communism around the world. These are all things they've actually said. I'm waiting for them to claim next they saw thousands of people vote twice using the Kanye mask. And <laughs> you would know who it is because they'd vote twice for Kanye. Arizona Congressman Paul Gosar, one of the leaders of the attempt to overturn the results, said in a recent congressional hearing that mysterious unnamed sources had approached him the day after the election to tell him the election was stolen from Donald Trump. Now, don't worry about trying to follow any of this because you can't. The day after the election, I was contacted by two individuals. One had, had security uh, and fraud uh, uh, pro jobs with the, the banking world. The other one goes from fraud from the Department of Defense. What they saw from Arizona drew their attention quickly first. They saw numbers of 90-some thousand, 60-some thousand, 40-some thousand ballots drop into Donald Trump's category and then quickly come out verbatim. But then they started watching there and, and looking to the dumps. And what I mean by that is, is there's a first dump, there's multiple dumps, maybe nine or 10 through the night. If the first dump in Coquino County was 61% for Joe Biden, you would expect the rest of the time, the rest of the dumps, to be very similar. 58, 62, 55, and so forth. Not 40, 38, 35. That drove their big question mark for them. Hey, man, if you're going to talk about dumps that much, could you maybe move away from the camera a little bit? <laughs> Or just point it lower? Did you record this on an ATM security camera? <laughs> Are you under the impression that your forehead is your best feature? It's not. And I say that as a person who has the same one. <laughs> also, I love the idea that someone would find rock-solid evidence that the election was stolen and say, uh, hey, this is big. Should we uh, take it to the FBI, CIA, Washington Post? Or how about that space case congressman from Arizona? Gosar was, along with other fringe weirdos like Marjorie Taylor Greene, one of the key instigators of the attempt to overturn the election results on January 6th. Greene got into a shouting match on the House floor last week with colleagues during a vote to hold former Trump advisor Steve Bannon in contempt for defying a subpoena from the committee investigating the insurrection. And when she was asked about that vote by CNN, the interview took a weird turn. What was the rationale behind your vote? 
The rationale behind my vote is I'm not self-absorbed like the rest of these jerks here in Congress. They're all ignoring inflation. People can hardly buy food. Gas has gone up. Jerks, if you Gas is because they're self-absorbed. All they care about is Congress. They don't care about the American people that there pay all the taxes. The all you want to talk about is, is your Trump derangement syndrome. And all you want to talk about is Why January 6th where there's a riot Steve here. Bannon? Why protect Steve Bannon? Because I care about American people. She has the grammar and cadence of the lady at Buffalo Wild Wings trying to get everyone's attention after one too many Keystone Lights. <laughs> also, you might have noticed there was a weird ending where a random dude just wandered up next to her during the interview. Now, if you've ever taken the subway before, you might be thinking, oh, no. He's about to ask her about Scientology, but <laughs> turns out he's another Republican member of Congress, and he decided to just crash the interview and pull Green away. The interview ended soon after when fellow Republican Congressman Pete Sessions of Texas walked into the middle of our conversation. So, you doing okay? I'm Let's doing get good. out of here. Okay. But not okay. Steve Bannon. Well, even her fellow Republicans are like, Marjorie! Marjorie, you want it off. Maybe you should stay away from the cameras, Marjorie. <laughs> Or at the very least, Marjorie. At the very least, use a filter to disguise yourself. <laughs> because I never, I've never seen that happen in an interview before. And you know, doing interviews is my job. It definitely doesn't help you seem more normal. If someone in a suit came up to Andy Samberg halfway through an interview on this show and said, "Hey, Andy, you okay? Let's get out of here." I definitely think something's up with Samberg. And then I text him later, and I'd say, "Hey, man." What was that? And he texts back something like, sorry, I forgot to tell you. And I'd say, forgot to tell me what? And then there would be like three dots making me think he was writing something painfully confessional until he just said, Frisbee sucks. <laughs> I mean, seriously, can you imagine the reaction if halfway through a closer look, someone just stopped me and took me off stage? Hey, Seth, are you okay? Maybe you should go. Why do you say that? Do I not seem okay? Oh, no, you seem fine. But you see, every time I say a line on camera, I get paid. And I need the money to fix my pool. Your house has a pool? <laughs> Don't be silly, Seth. My beach house has a pool. The beach house Seth Meyers made. Wink. We're not paying you for the wink. You don't get money for a line if it's just saying a stage direction. And this week, Green seemed to justify the insurrection by claiming that the Declaration of Independence says to overthrow tyrants, that apparent confession that comes just days after a bombshell report from Rolling Stone tying Green to the so-called Stop the Steal rally. On January 6th, that eventually led to the riot. Two planners of the pro-Trump rallies, who are now cooperating with the committee investigating the insurrection, described participating in dozens of planning briefings ahead of that day. When Trump supporter broke into the Capitol, I remember Marjorie Taylor Greene specifically, one organizer said, and you would definitely remember talking to Marjorie Taylor Greene. The same way you'd remember being attacked by Chucky. If the cops <laughs> were taking your statement after a Chucky attack, you wouldn't say, oh, man, I don't remember his name. I think he was like, oh, like two feet tall, orange hair, overalls, <laughs> scars all over his face. Might have been a Cabbage Patch kid. I don't know. <laughs> Former mayor. But basically, <laughs> Green had initially responded to the allegations by denying that she was involved in planning to the rally, saying the only thing she was very involved in was objecting to the election results on January 6th. Then, Referring to the Rolling Stone article, she added, shouldn't they cover music? <laughs> they do, which is why they were writing about you, one person who was equal to 10,000 maniacs. <laughs> and hey, I know it seems like pandering to reference a hot modern band to get an audience reaction, <laughs> but hey, hey, we give them what they want. <laughs> I'm sorry. That <laughs> network thing, they're cracking on us really hard. <laughs> They're like, you haven't even obliquely mentioned Natalie Merchant in like two years. <laughs> if you're watching at home and you like that joke, like reach out. <laughs> joke. <laughs> also, her denial is itself a damning admission. She claims she wasn't involved in planning the protest because she was too busy trying to overturn the election results. We shouldn't. Just let that pass by unnoticed. It's a classic defense. I couldn't have burned down your house because I was too busy buying gasoline and matches and a map to your house. <laughs> but probably the worst non-denial denial came from Alabama Congressman Mo Brooks, one of the most vocal advocates of the big lie and another co-conspirator who was also implicated in the Rolling Stone article. Brooks said in response that he had no involvement in planning the January 6th rally, but said, I don't know if my staff did, but if they did, I'd be proud of them for helping to put together 
a rally lawful under the First Amendment at the Ellipse to protest voter fraud and election theft. Wow, he OJ'd his own staff. <laughs> I didn't do it, but if my staff did, here's how. <laughs> it's a really nice joke that we just told. Like, that we changed what OJing means to mean, like, writing a book. <laughs> like, for a long time, he's been like, I feel like when people say OJ, you know, they think. You know, to OJ someone is to write a piece of speculative fiction. <laughs> For me, it's like author, football, and then you know. <laughs> Brooks really threw his staff under the bus, although in fairness, I do that a lot with my staff when a joke bombs. Like, I had no involvement with that 10,000 Maniacs joke. <laughs> but I'm proud of whoever wrote it. Took a lot of guts. <laughs> I took a lot of guts to go out there and ruin people. <laughs> now, if you're not familiar with Mo Brooks, he's the extremely pro-Trump congressman who gave an incendiary speech calling on Trump supporters to start taking down names and kicking ass, then said he only did it because Trump told him to. He metaphorically ran away from a lawsuit over his involvement in the insurrection and literally ran away from a reporter who tried to ask him about his support for accused sexual predator Roy Moore in 2017. You believe in the women? Yeah, that definitely seems like the kind of guy who would incite an insurrection, blame his staff, and then I guess, judging from the clacking sound, escape on horseback. <laughs> Seriously, the Foley work on that clip is outstanding. Why does it sound like they're galloping into town on a Mustang? I didn't invite you to ride, but if my staff did, I'd be proud of him. Now, if you'll excuse me, me and old Thunder here, we down at the saloon, drinking a sarsaparilla and getting our next mission from weird old Abe Lincoln. The core. The core of today's Republican Party is the big lie that the election was stolen. They tried to overthrow the results. They're being open about it, trying to justify it, and planning on doing it again, which is why they have to be stopped. One of our two major parties, the party poised to take back power if Democrats fail, has been captured by a cult-like movement of weirdos, authoritarians, and... Scoundrels! You don't get used to it. <laughs> this has been a closer look. God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over two million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV, AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses, and they need your help. Now more than ever, if you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button, stay safe, get vaccinated. We love you.